Good evening. Uh, today is Thursday of Holy Week, Maundy Thursday, and our gospel reading today is uh, John 13. It's the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And uh, I begin with, I'm just going to read the first verse of John 13. Uh, Before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And and here we see the, uh, in one sense, the heart of the whole passage from John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 is captured in uh, just that one simple verse. Uh, Jesus is his time, the time has come. The hour, the appointed hour has come, and soon he will be uh, returning to the Father. So it it is um, set in in the relation he has with the Father, which he will reiterate throughout uh, this meal. He will talk about the love he shares between him and the Father, and he will also uh, emphasize this in John 17 when he prays for the disciples. And then it says, having loved his own. Uh, his own disciples who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And so now we have the setting for this story. It's a a story of a communion of love. And uh, this captures in uh, the whole sense of Maundy Thursday is this communion of love. Jesus comes, he gathers his disciples at this Passover meal, and he... He kneels down before them and he washes their feet. It is an act of intimacy. He humbles himself. And if you've participated in a foot washing, it can be a very intimate act, often uh, very emotional. Uh, I've been in services where people, many tears uh, come. I've worked in Pentecostal churches where we practiced foot washing more often than uh, once a year. And it was often, it could be very emotional, uh, often times of forgiveness, times of relationship healing, as people um, humble themselves before one another and wash one another's feet, a time of uh, restoration and healing. And so here Jesus is demonstrating, physically demonstrating an act of the heart. He's physically humbling himself, even as Paul will tell us to humble ourselves before one another. Uh, to consider one another uh, above ourselves, to uh, pour out our gifts for one another. Our lives are poured out in love. So we see this uh, community of disciples now gathered together, and and Jesus is emphasizing a communion of love. And then he, uh, in the middle of the meal, he takes the bread and breaks it, gives it to them. This is my body given for you. He takes the cup and he shares it with him. This is my blood shed for you. And so we have uh, the institution of communion, which the church observes today. And it will be it's part of our collect for today. So the institution of communion. But once again, this emphasis on this word communion, the, the binding together in love of the community of Christ. And, and then uh, thirdly, we have uh, the name of the day, Maundy Thursday, uh, the notion of Uh, mandate or command. Jesus says uh, in John 15, a new command I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, how has Christ loved them? Well, he has, uh, Paul helps us to see some of that in Philippians 2. He, though being God, uh, pours his divinity into humanity. He becomes man. And then he humbles himself as a servant. And now, uh, this meal, after this meal, he will humble himself even further and become accursed. And he will enter into the brokenness uh, of humanity, the brokenness between the world and God and humanity, uh, man and women, the division between all relations. He will enter into our broken estate and bring healing and so this is how he has loved us. And so if you can imagine when we read uh, uh, John 13, like this verse I just read, Jesus knew his hour had come 
to depart out of the world to the Father. Or if I go down to verse 3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had all things in, had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, and then it proceeds to say, rose from summer, taking off his outer garments, taking a towel, tied it around his waist, and he begins to wash their feet. Um, so he knows he's going to the Father. He knows he's come from God and he's returning to God. Um, what we're seeing in Christ, as Paul will say in Colossians, is the express image of the Father. Who is God? Well, Jesus is revealing God right here. Love poured out fully, unrestrained, unrestrained love, pulled out, poured out fully for the healing of broken humanity because of our own sinfulness, healing of the brokenness between people. It is uh, love unrestrained. This is what God looks like, is in Christ. In Christ, as we read in John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. He's calling his disciples to become a community that looks like the communion of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This community will look like the love of God that is poured out without restraint between the Father, Son, and Spirit, that is poured out wholly and completely. It is a community of hospitality, a community of generosity, a community of freely giving. Now, it is a beautiful picture, and, and we know that all of us fall short of pouring out our lives in that way, and yet this is the kind of life Jesus has invited us into. This is uh, the communion that he has invited us into, and when we uh, have the opportunity when churches gather again and we can actually break bread together, physically together, we remember our longing to be together our longing to be present with one another. And we also remember our calling to love one another wholly and without restraint. And as we learn this way of life, this way of love that is only uh, fully unveiled by the power of the Spirit, then we become a people in the world who are known by their love. We become a people who express the love of God freely to a world that desperately needs uh, his kindness, his forgiveness, his healing and restoring power. So may this be a blessed Monday Thursday for you. And may you know the deep love of God for you and the deep love of a community that he has called you into in Christ. Good night.